Hello, everybody. I'm Ryan Haas, the founder and webmaster of the Super Mario Brothers, the movie archive website. And today I'm here with perhaps the most formative screenwriting duo that contributed to the film, Dick Clement and Ian Lafrenet. How are you both doing today? We're fine, Good. thank you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's so great to get you both present and on a, on a call. I mean, you're kind of the, the missing link in, in the writer chronology for the film because it's got, the film has a very long gestation production process from all the different versions they tried to make to what actually got filmed. And the scripts that you both worked on is where the film that actually happened took the most shape. Yes. From everything that we've done. And on the website, we've we've acquired most all of the scripts from all those eras, except for the very first one. And I just got to say, like, when I first started collecting things for the website, way back in like 2007, 2008, um, there was like a website that I found that you could just buy scripts, film scripts from and Super Mario Brothers was on it. And so I I bought it, just blind bought it cause it didn't really say who wrote it or whatever. And I got it in the mail and it was this one. And it was an original script and it had, it originally had the light motive backing on it. So it's it's a legit original script and it says, you know, written by- It Dick does, Clinton. doesn't it? And, yeah, it's, right. Right. and it's the, <laughs> I don't know which draft, it says it's a draft, but um, we've got a couple of drafts from you from you guys and at it the time have much relationship to the finished film well None. that's the that's the interesting thing i mean at the time i was like well who are these guys <laughs> because you're not credited on the final film sure um, ended up being, um, so before right before you guys was um parker bennett and terry runte and right after was uh ed solomon and then parker and terry came back when the movie was being shot and did all the rewrites <laughs> on set. Yeah. Um, so I guess my first question is, is how did you both come onto the project and what interested you about it? Well, it was, uh, the, the first thing to say is that neither of us knew anything about Super Mario Brothers. I mean, it was, it was not a, we're not particularly gamers. And if we were, that probably wouldn't have been our game. Um, so, so we didn't, we, we were complete virgins when it came to looking at this. And, and, but, and then people said to us, oh, you know, it's big. It's really big. And we said, is it? <laughs> and, <you> know, <laughs> and so we, we had to do a complete crash course in, in finding out what was the, the whole idea of the, uh, of, of the, of the, um, the game. I remember, saying, I remember saying, what do you mean they're plumbers? <laughs> I couldn't believe that we were writing a film where the, the heroes were plumbers. Um, but we had to learn pretty quickly. I, I think, didn't we get the first call? I think Dick was from Roland Joffe. Either him or Jake. He was, yeah. uh, I don't think we met Jake at the beginning. He then made the deal. He was a, a great guy, Jake Evitz. But, but we were very happy to meet Rocky and... Uh, Annabelle, we didn't know them, but we'd admired them. Uh, what was the series they called? Max Headroom. Max the, Headroom. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we thought, oh, they must be very bright, and let 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 them tell us all about it. And 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 they're so charming, and and bright and funny that that we you know that's I think why we got engaged with it because of their enthusiasm, uh, and because of what they wanted to do with the film, and because it was a kind of big adventure film which like a fairy tale as well and game so it was definitely we definitely responded to uh, annabelle and rocky and in fact it, it was their opinion we valued most all the time we were writing it although right. uh, everyone seemed happy till the very end didn't they Dick? <laughs> well yes i mean uh, if i remember rightly we suddenly heard that Nintendo wasn't happy. I mean, we, we must have done something in that script, <laughs> which was diametrically opposed to the, 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 the sort of the Bible of what Nintendo believed to be Super Mario Brothers. I can't remember what that was. I can't remember what rule we'd broken. 
I know, but all I remember, and this is what's so sad for us, because we thought we'd done a good job, and Jake Ebert said, this is great, was that Roland Joffe suddenly said, this is not right, this is not working, I, I'm going to do it. And Annabelle, I, and I quote them, Annabelle and Rocky said, you can't do this. We have at last got the script that we believe in and want to shoot. That's what they said. And if we bumped into them in the street tomorrow, they'd probably say the same. And that was what made it so sad. The directors said, we've got the script we want to shoot. Mm. I, actually, I, did, I actually bumped into Rocky last year, or maybe 18 months ago, at a, at a reception for something else. And uh, it's the first time I'd seen him since then, you know, and, and wow. so we were commiserating. Because, I mean, it, it really, they, they suffered from oh, yeah. uh, very much. It, it, and it really didn't help their career one bit. I mean, that's the, the, that's the sad and brutal part. It was, it was so abrupt, Roland. It was so abrupt. No, no, this doesn't work. Um, I'm, 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 I'm taking over. And, and, and we'd gone uh, with tears from Annabelle. <laughs> and uh, so I come, I, I think just out of curiosity, we obviously saw the finished film, which was pretty terrible. Uh, <laughs> am, am I offending all sorts of Super Mario fans out there? Oh, you're not us. Not I us. mean, it, it's, it's just, first of all, you compare it with what you've done. Yes. And so it's hard to be objective. But um, it, born, it, it, it had nothing of what our story and what we'd written did it. I don't think anything. Uh, it, it was just a, a completely different film. So that's always a sad experience when you work really hard and you've got the directors excited. And then uh, everything changes. But it won't be the last time it happens. Right, right. Yeah, it must, it must have been. I guess that was just before we, we switched to computers, Ian. Because yeah. I, I don't have it on my. Oh, you don't have it on computer in the system. No, I don't have it in the system at all. Uh, and and I remember I was writing around at your place um, when we were desperately trying to finish another draft. You know, it, it's about the only time in my life I've ever drunk brandy. <laughs> 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 I remember thinking that we, I needed something to stimulate me to get through the end of that draft. And I, yeah. and I, I still don't drink brandy, but I did then. That was the only time it, it drove me it to it. Turned just to drink. Yes, yes. But, but doing it was quite fun. I mean, I remember having a good time doing it once we got in this groove of this fantasy. Yeah. Gamer world fantasy. Quite enjoyed it. And, look, and, look, and uh, really liked Rocky and Annabelle. Um, but Where was it so set? I, I, sorry, Miss B. They, they went off to shoot a script, uh, believing that the better script was let, was in the in the waste bin. Yeah. However, I'm not being yeah. arrogant or anything. No. Really. Um. So Rocky Rocky has told us before that I mean it's it's one of his famous kind of formative stories about the film is that um, he says that your script was was the one that they were the happiest with that they did want to go with it was the one that all the sets got built towards and built to like they were ready to shoot it and rocky had uh, and annabelle had worked very meticulously on getting the whole thing storyboarded and we have a lot of those storyboards too and just right before they were about to shoot is when the transition happened and they and and disney came in as the financer and so it was like a combination of all those things were like oh no we have to like dumb the movie down and make it more family friendly but it was like two weeks before shooting, so they had to go really fast and change a bunch of stuff. And um, was it was, Wilmington Studios. It was just in Wilmington, North Carolina, and shot in in a big cement factory. The big ideal cement factory got turned into the ah. Manhattan city. And yeah, uh, yeah, we we've shot in North Carolina, enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Places. Do you, do you do you know what the main objection from Nintendo was? Can you remind me of that? Well. It's it's kind of interesting because the movie started out as being more of a literal fairy tale adaptation of the games, mm -hmm. and um, but it's my understanding that when Nintendo handed the rights over, they were pretty much they just viewed the movie as this thing, and they were going to let the filmmakers take care of it because they liked um, the pitch that uh, Roland Joffe gave. That they were like, let's let the experts handle it. Um, and so they went through all this process and 
it was going to be more like the games and then they decided not to do that um and go and once they brought rocky and annabelle on board they were the ones that had this completely different vision with the sci-fi and the dinosaur angle and um and they let them run with it um quite a bit until like i said until until the financing needed to a bump and the distribution started to happen and so it was a combination of like Disney and Nintendo, I guess, together being like, oh no, we have to make sure this is also, fa- we, we want to let you do what you want to do, but it's also got to be family friendly. So I think that just general vibe kind of was what they were trying to just attack on the film because, um, I mean, that's kind of my question is, is, is tone wise and rating wise and everything. Do you guys remember how, Rocky and Annabelle kind of pitched the story to you and, and, and what they wanted out of the script um, based off of previous drafts. Because like previous drafts, they tried really hard to get a lot of the game elements into the script, but they kept feeling like it wasn't a good narrative for a film. And so a lot of the things that they've told us and we've got script notes from them is that your, your draft kind of turned all these ideas into an actual movie with a through line. Yeah. Made sense. Yeah. We gave it cohesion and I yes. think humanized it and gave the characters characters as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but God, it's so hard. I think when you have a bad experience, you do tend to f- blot it out your head. You know, you, you re- can certainly remember Super Mario much less than another film, very similar time. You know what I mean? Which was, happy experience but the, the, I, no, so I remember because Den, Dennis Hopper was the baddie right yes Dennis was the main bad I can't was Fisher Stevens in it yes was he one of the plumbers Fisher Stevens uh, Fisher he? Stevens and Richard Edson were, were um, Dennis Hopper's henchmen so they were kind of oh, the, who, who were the plumbers Bob Hoskins yeah Bob Hoskins that's right and who was the other one and John Leguizamo oh my god yeah that's right <laughs> We knew, we knew Bob pretty well because we'd, we'd done a series with him in, uh, in England. So mm-hmm. we knew Bob very well. But, but We had no connection with him on this film. Of course not. No. Yeah, we were, you, were you aware of the – I think what we've been told is that your script is what actually attracted most of the cast, like Hoskins, Leguizamo, and Hopper. They, they read your script and they were like, oh, this is not just the game thing. This is like a – a movie that they're trying to do something interesting with. And then when they got to set and it was completely different from, from what they signed on for, they were like, what the heck? Like all the backbone oh. kind of gone from the film. Validation, yeah. Dick. All these years later, this young man <laughs> rings up. <and> validates. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nice to know. But um, so after that, of course, we had nothing to do with it. Uh, I never ran into Roland Joffe again. Saw Jake Ebert's a uh, uh, a few years ago about another project that was Jungle Book. But over the years, a lot, never saw Roland Joffe again. And as Dick said, we occasionally bumped into Rocky or Anne because they then divorced, mm-hmm. went their own separate ways. So when you spoke to them, just as a matter of interest on this, where, where are they? Where are they living? Um, I think Rocky's still in England and... Annabelle seems to go between the states in England quite a bit. Um, she she messages us a little bit more, and it's it's interesting. She, I mean, both of them, I think, in the intervening years, have they they were hurt really badly by the the whole experience. But over the years, like I, I feel like the work we've done with the website has helped, and the cultural awareness of what the movie did and was has uh, they've come up, up back around to it a little bit because now they kind of see how that work fits within how pop culture has evolved over the years. So, so Annabelle especially has been pretty open about champ- championing our work and stuff and, and, and being happy about where it's gone and everything. So, and they've contributed to things like they appear on the, the documentary that we did that we helped work on for the, for the Blu-ray. So. Right. Well, what is the current cultural state of super Mario brothers? What, the movie the gaming universe. Well, in the gaming universe, it's always been the, um, it's like the quintessential grandfather 
it's it, it is gaming it, he's the mickey mouse of gaming basically uh, i don't think that'll ever change like he's like the the icon of what video games are and i think that's yeah. that's part of what was so interesting about the movie at the time and especially now is that you're taking an icon that when you play the game you're you're projecting yourself onto mario but you guys and the filmmakers had to like take that out of it because you, when you watch a movie you're you just watch the character and you have to kind of take that personal aspect out of it and yeah. give the people characterization. So, I mean, that was one question I was wondering is how, how involved were when Rocky and Annabelle worked with you guys, how instrumental were they in the, like the story and characters like pitching it to you? Did they give you game references or were they more like, here's these old drafts, here's what we want. We need like more character work or, like, was it more the sky's the limit, see what you can do with it? Or did they have more of a story idea that they wanted done? No, we worked more to their brief than anyone else's um, because they were the directors and, and they were so enthusiastic. And they, and they were, but then normally, then we, then we would go off and write. But I think, I don't think, I, I don't know if this is true, Dick, but I have a feeling that unlike most things where we would, if we were doing a rewrite or a script, you know, we'd get on, we'd finish it. I think we might have, you know, shown sh chunks as we went on to Rocky and Annabelle. I think we did, yes. I think we did. It was like, here's, an, here's 40 pages. Are we on the right track kind of thing? Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I think in that sense, they were involved in saying, oh, yes, that's right. Uh, rather than us going away, then delivering a hundred pages. Yes, I, I remember that. I th I yeah, think I think so. And and they were so agreed. On it. it was uh, it was fine. Um. Uh. And and every because they, they were enthusiastic and because they were pleased, we just assumed everyone else was. So it was a, a, a absolute shock. To to this day, when Roland suddenly appeared and said, N "None of this works." And, and he had some thematic issue, didn't he, Dick? He I had some remember. thematic issue which he was going on about and felt we'd ignored. And anyhow, that was the end of it. Yeah. I think I pressed the erase button. Um, yeah. Um, I'll just shoot. Sorry. Hello. But it, um, <laughs> it, else it, it, it was nice to hear what you just said about this. That was the script that got the actors. Yeah, we've heard that from from multiple actors is that that's when they I think they even did maybe have I think it was early enough that they even did like the table read with that script earlier on yeah. and then it just completely changed. At well, I, the 11th I, I, hour. I think he, it, um, my son Sam was was quite young at the time, but, you know, I, I sort of said he would he would love to work on the on the film. And, and he of course he was in North Carolina, so he mm. he was there for the whole shoot. And I'm sure he'll have a different uh, well, a different angle on it because I'm, sure. he, must, he must have been aware of uh, the. Uh, it can't have been an easy shoot, particularly. I think that if the actors were really shooting a script that they hadn't approved or hadn't been hooked by, which I, mm -hmm. I think I had heard that, um, that, then obviously that's not a happy. That's not a happy situation. Right. The uh, the actual filming of the movie is is pretty inarguably more, maybe even more infamous than the movie itself because of, of how, you know, Rocky and Annabelle were let go before the film was done and all the production crews had to like band together and rewrites yeah. had to happen to finish, actually finish the film and the way it was edited and all those things just to kind of get it, make it cohesive. Even, even in um, the ADR afterwards, you know, there was a lot of the ADR I think some people, I think we talked to the editor, Mark Goldblatt, and he said that Super Mario Brothers had more ADR on it than pretty much any other movie he's ever worked on just to kind of get more connective tissue between scenes and to get the big concepts of what the film was trying to do across yeah. to, the, to the viewers. That's why at the very beginning of the movie, there's like a big history lesson of like, here's the high concept of the movie in case you don't know what you're about to see. <laughs> It's you know. interesting. The, the only other film which we, we had a very minor connection with, but, but had, had the same sort of disastrousness, was um, Leonard Part Six with Bill Cosby. 
<laughs> where we were asked to come in when you said, talked about ADR, it maybe it reminded me. We were so we saw people coming out of the screening. We were working on the Columbia lot at the time. And we saw people come out with very serious faces from the first screening of the movie. And then we were invited in to say, look, could you write an opening bit of dialogue for Tom Courtney, who played um, Bill Cosby's butler, to sort of explain <laughs> the rules of the game. And we wrote that, and uh, it didn't help. Do you know what I mean? It was like right. a Band-Aid on a paraplegic. Um, <laughs> That's, but, yeah. I mean, it's interesting that that you obviously you you tend to be talking about your successes more than your failures or or I mean that was not our failure I think we can hold up our hands and say wasn't our fault Leonard part six but it was um, memorably you know disastrous right well, but how, that, did, how did how did Super Mario perform I mean uh, it was it was a pretty big box office bomb actually because. Not just because, not just because of all of the the marketing and leading up to it. Part of it is because like Disney was the distributor, and it was a Nintendo based movie. But Nintendo, but Disney didn't really know where to put it in terms of their distribution because it's a game based thing, but it's also a family thing, but it's also a little bit more adult. So they put it as in in their Hollywood Pictures uh, distribution wing, which is a little bit more for their adult films. And there were some things with Nintendo where Nintendo, uh. Nintendo wouldn't let them, Nintendo wouldn't let the, um, the marketing for the film show anything related to the games at all. It had to be, this is the movie, this is the movie, this is the movie, and they didn't want any game connection. So it was kind of a weird thing. So that, there was that going against it. And then the other major thing is that uh, Jurassic Park came out two or three weeks later. Oh my <laughs> and just, god! And just killed it. <laughs> so, and that's the other the other dinosaur movie, you know, in 1993. So that's I mean that's kind of the, the biggest reason is it kind of wiped it off the map. But but there's um there's so many people that have messaged us over the years that have said things like, I was the target demographic in 1993. I saw it opening weekend, and we either get two reactions of like. I, it was weird and I didn't understand it or I knew it was weird. And I didn't understand it, but I loved it anyway. And now that they're my age or older or whatever, they, they're, they want to go back to and figure out what happened and why. And, and, and for us, it's, it's a really interesting little puzzle to kind of unravel to, to figure out what, what it was and what it means. And just because it's, in my opinion, it's one of the most interesting examples of adapting something from one medium to another you know and it being the very first one games to a film it's sure. it's always going to be super interesting yeah so did you have you talked to roland yes yeah roland did an interview an on an on-camera interview with us and he told us his whole story about pitching the the film to nintendo and trying to go to J going to japan and and getting uh actually giving them a lower like a lower ball uh, offer for the film rights compared to bigger studios and how that worked and yeah like he he had a lot of he had a lot of positive fond things to say about about it being like this experiment that he that they he worked on but um so like i was wondering so do you do you remember how many drafts you did actually were able to work on oh two three, three probably Three drafts, probably, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sure it was three drafts. It usually is. Right. The third well, one, the third one was the Brandy Draft, Ian, I think. <laughs> <laughs> we'll um, have to get a new nickname. Most of our scripts uh, on, our, on the website, we have them available. We, we give them nicknames so, so to easily identify what is going on. And um, one of your... The first draft we have from March, early March, 92, we call it the Die Hard draft because there's a Bruce Willis cameo in it. <laughs> Do you guys remember oh. adding that in where Mario's in the tower and he just sees Bruce Willis? <laughs> Obviously. I'm interested to read that script you showed us actually that, um, because I, I, I just, I don't have a copy. We don't have a copy, do we? That's crazy. No? 
We, and we've got, God knows, we've got nearly everything we've ever written, but not that. I don't. Wow. Well, it's pre-computers. It's, it's uh, you know, it, it, we, we, it was written longhand and then typed every 20 pages. Yeah. Then typed and then typed and bound and given to them and then redone mm. in script form. Interesting. Gosh. Yeah. Are the, you, uh, you the very, put it, if you put it on eBay, we'll buy it. <laughs> Well, uh, we'll, we'll get, uh, Stephen, we'll send you links. We've got links and you can just, um, even, we've got them scanned already. They're already ready to go. Oh, that would be so great. That'd yeah. be fascinating. They're in PDFs and, um, on the website, yeah. even we've got, um, we've got the scripts. We've got, um, we've got synopsis. We, we have people do it like a big synopsis. So people that want to go back and refer to them, but not have to read the whole script can get the big major beats. And the other thing that we got is, um, we even acquired uh, Annabelle's script revision notes on your first draft. So we've got like a 12 page document where she's gone through the script and has all these notes of things she wanted to see for your next draft, which was really interesting. She wanted yeah. things like, um, that's so cool. Yeah. She, one of the things that, she, that she wanted uh, from one of your drafts to the next was wanted more things like, um, Princess Daisy and Fiona Shaw's villainous character, Lena, to be a little bit more developed and self-motivated. Do you guys remember the character work like that, trying to... Oh, sure. I mean, most of the, what we're brought in for is because of character work. Mm -hmm. Certainly we don't write... We weren't being asked to write action, extraordinary action sequences. I suddenly forgot. I suddenly, suddenly flashed on Fiona Shaw's face. That's right. Gosh. Yeah. Like in earlier drafts, she was more of a, uh, just like a arm candy secretary. But um, I think in your drafts is where that character evolves into more of a, like a Disney villainous kind of like yeah. second only to Dennis Hopper's Koopa. Yeah. Character. Yeah. She was bad. From Super Mario to Killing Eve. What a career. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, my, my other major question, just wondering is that, the movie, there's a, the politics and political stuff is a big major theme in the film. And that's one of the things that gets, that got watered down a little bit, a lot actually in the final film. But was that something that um, Rocky and Annabelle wanted to drive in that? Or was that something that you both saw as an opportunity to kind of inject into the film, like American politics and the political system in general? I can't remember. Can you even? I can't really recall. I can't. I, I, it doesn't sound like Rocky and Annabelle's, I, uh, you know, injection. Being being so British and not being in America very long, to but but I can't swear about that. It sounds more like if there was a, it sounds more like Roland, hmm. Hmm. having an idea to interject some more contemporary political issue. Interesting. But Interesting. But, I, but 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 I can never swear to that in court. Interesting. There's a. There is a brief exchange in your script about um, Koopa running different political ads, but it's but there's all for him. Koopa the sportsman, Koopa the cruel, Koopa the stud, and and Mario and Luigi are saying like, oh, who who do you vote for? And then one of the other characters says, you can vote for anybody as long as it's Koopa. And and then Mario says, well, what kind of system is that? And then they say it's democracy. Uh -huh. And um, that. Um, that was cut. That was actually filmed, cut out of the film. But we found um, we recently found an uh, an earlier work print version of the film that has that scene in it, and we had it restored and we put it on YouTube. So you can actually. Oh really? Yeah, you can actually see that scene, edited and done. All right, nice talking to you. Yeah, this is great. Well, I really appreciate it. We've always wanted to talk to you guys and see get your take on what happened and what your experience was like. Great. Great. Appreciate well, we're still at it. We're still, do we're still doing it. So that's great. All right. Very nice to meet you. You too. Appreciate it. Bye. Thanks.